It's Wes and Ace on the Frisco Show. and Big Ace Show. All right, people. Freestyles of your boy Chip from AKA Jungle Rock Jr. Be for the future. Let's go, jump. This ain't no half for no joking matter. Should we slaughter any boy, any weather after? Who always like chatter? And run them out. If they run them out and out of town, they better leave before we burn them out. This ain't no half for no joking matter. Should we slaughter Turn the lights down, my Jesus. Hello, everybody. It's time. It's time again for Briscoe and Big Ace. Oh, man. It's been way too long. It actually really hasn't been that long, but it feels like eternity. Yeah, we're pretty on track with our bi-weekly episodes that I think we want to do. But yeah, this will be episode four or five. Four. I, I believe it's four. Yeah, I can't uh, count. <laughs> yeah, my, actually, I got good math. It's my spelling and grammar that's not the most proper, as you would say. But you know what? We're all human, so it doesn't really matter. That's great. We put our heads together, then we would uh, be a great student. But what's going on, man? I wanted uh, good to talk to you again because since I've talked to you last, Wes, you are now the tag team champion for Atomic Wrestling with your old buddy from Aces and Eights, right? Garrett Bischoff. Yeah, it's actually pretty crazy. Me and uh, Garrett are tagging again. I mean, me and Garrett really haven't tagged since back in TNA, and that was, I mean, a couple of years. I mean, at least four or five years ago since we were both in TNA. And, of course, when we were both TNA, we were really good friends, and then we were tag team partners then. And it feels pretty good to be tagging up with them now and uh, getting uh, the actual goal because at one time, me and him were going for the TNA tag team titles. Really? Yeah, one time I believe Gunner and um, Gunner and James Storm had them at the time, and we were doing a feud against them, and we were supposed to uh, actually take the titles off of them, but you know things happened, and I went a different direction, and you know things happened. But now me and Garrett are back together, and we're tagging, and we're kicking some ass down here in florida cocoa beach area so if you guys are ever in the area make sure you check out atomic revolution wrestling it's out of cocoa we're gonna actually start doing tours and we're gonna start uh really uh moving this company forward i'm blessed to be a part of this company not only being one of the wrestlers but also being one of the agents nice yeah plus it's just a badass name i would totally go to a show that uh, if even if i knew nothing about it and they're just like what's the name of the company atomic wrestling i'm like i'm in i'm in that sounds awesome already yeah man it's it's really cool we're we have a really good program and again like it's cool for me because i'm actually doing something different you know i'm not just wrestling i'm behind the scenes i'm coming up with finishes for other people's matches i'm coming up with spots and being more hands-on helping other people with their matches and then getting to sit behind the curtain and see if what I told them actually work is been pretty uh, fulfilling for me. Definitely. So, yeah, you uh, did that. You got you and Eric tag team champions now in Atomic Wrestling. Hopefully that does go on the road so I can go to some of those shows. But what else you got going on? Uh, let's let everybody know where you're going to be now before we get too heavy in the conversation. Yeah, I will be this weekend. I will be the Saturday. I will be in North Carolina for RWA. And then next weekend I'll be in Atlanta for UCW tv which will be on the fight app nice yeah a couple of shows coming up (laughs) very cool and if you haven't checked out that fight app make sure you do that things things pretty badass yeah you guys definitely need to check out the fight app download it if you want to watch any pro wrestling mma boxing it's pretty much covers all of that and they have the really cool option where you hit a button and it instantly pairs to your tv i mean it's works really really well Dude, super sick. That's how I watched All In. Got to watch back the Ring of Our Sea of Honor tournament uh, from the Chris Jericho cruise that I was on. So, yeah, it's definitely a cool, cool, cool app. A lot of cool things in the fight world, too. You know, that uh, uh, Wilder Fury match got up there, getting their rematch right away. Yeah, there's been like, it's been crazy with MMA right now. It's like, it's been getting kind of hard for me to watch just because it's been, there's so much. Like, it's getting kind of overwhelming of the amount of MMA that's just 
flooded on TV now. Like it's just pretty it's pretty crazy. But do you get the feel though that like for me it's hard to watch anything UFC anymore? I unless it's like a fighter that I know mm-hmm. or someone that like I've studied or like a big name. It's kind of just it seems like they all just kind of blur together, like all the fighters. Like they just seem kind of like all the same. Of course, you got those ones like that are, you know, totally just unique and the ones you want to follow, like that Udell guy mm-hmm. um, from Cuba. That dude's a badass. He's he's so sick. And then um, who are some other up and comers that, uh, I mean, I guess, isn't uh, John Jones about to fight again? I guess he's. I think he's coming back. Yeah, he's got a fight coming up. Um, doesn't McGregor? Doesn't I thought McGregor had another fight coming up? I can't remember if he does or not. I don't, I don't know if he accepted or I don't, dude. I don't know what the deal is with that guy, man. It's it's been pretty crazy. It has, and then Mayweather is going overseas somewhere to fight. I guess at the end of the summer, possibly now. I don't know. It's dude watching watching a lot of the boxing and MMA stuff. I kind of get just tired of it because it's like I feel like I'm just watching Raw. Oh yeah, especially with now some of these storylines are ridiculous. Like I don't know, they've been drawing it out, and you know I do love watching a good UFC, especially if there's a good fight. But it just seems like you know I like Bellator too. You know I'm a big yeah. fan because big shouts out to my boy King Mo. You know he's representing Bellator, and of course he got also represent Jack Swagger. You know he just signed with Bellator, and he'll be fighting soon, and I can't wait to see that fight. Right. Dude, Swagger's going to do good, man. Like, people don't realize, like, he is, like, he's not like CM Punk. Like, Jack oh, Swagger actually has a legitimate background. Like, he is a legitimate badass. Man, he's just a beast. That guy is huge. Yeah, his, like, his size never really did it justice on TV. Like, no. Dude, next to him, he's, like, a good 6'7". You know, he's a big dude. And uh, I'm looking forward to him. I mean, he was a really good college wrestler and mm-hmm. just all around a really good stud. I mean, he was a really good football player, too. So I'm excited to see what he brings in the octagon. And uh, I'm actually really looking forward to him. Of course, you know, I'm going to be rooting him on really, really, really big. As everybody should. Yeah, that's going to be sweet to watch him uh, make his debut in there. It's, it's interesting seeing so many guys go back and forth now between the worlds, too, you know? You've yeah, got, I mean, I, I you've got him. You've got what? Uh, the, why can't I remember his name? Bobby Lashley. Uh, Del Bobby Rio. Lashley, you know? Del Rio. Um, Riddle. I mean, people do. People it goes didn't. all the way back to the beast, Dan the Man Severin. Yeah, but look, let's go back a little bit, Ace, because I don't really think our fans know that before Roberto Del Rio was in WWE, he actually did some MMA fights. I don't think our fans, some of our fans, some of our fans might know this, but some of our fans might not be. He was actually also on the uh, Mexican Greco-Roman Olympian team. Nice. That I did not know. I didn't know that he had an MMA background. I believe he is a part owner, I think. Of a MMA promotion in Mexico, am I right on yes, that? Yeah, yeah, he is actually part owner of a MMA uh, promotion down in Mexico. And I believe his last MMA fight, he fought a uh, Krokov. You know, interesting and left. You know how I know he uh, was an MMA fighter. Actually, uh, it's 2010 after bragging rights at the uh, Target Center downtown Minneapolis, Minnesota, on a Sunday night. Uh, Alberto Del Rio and some of the other boys just happened to walk into the same bar I was in no way. after the show, and there was no one there because it was a Sunday night. So we ended up spending about four hours drinking with these guys, and it was the night after that. I can't remember his name, but a Mexican fighter beat Brock Lesnar, and it was the night oh, that... Oh, yes, I know who you're talking about, yeah. Yeah, and it was the night that Taker was in the crowd, and they had their little uh, face-to-face that was on the internet yeah. when Brock was walking the locker room. Uh, it was that. It was right after that. So he was talking about that fight and asking us about, like, who were you cheering for and stuff, and that's when he actually was telling me about that. So, I mean, obviously, that was the one only time I ever met him. The guy would never know who I am, so if, <laughs> I'm sure no one... He would never remember that story, but... Yeah, it, it was interesting to hear him actually tell me about it. Yeah, man. Uh, me and Roberto, we're boys, man. Like, 
I got I definitely got to say that's one of my homies, man. I, I definitely will rather die for Roberto, man. Me and him have uh, we've had some good times together. Some that I don't even think I can mention on this podcast. <laughs> you know what I mean? Some crazy, crazy times with that cat, man. He knows how to have a good time, man. And you know he's doing really well for himself. I'm very happy for him. And man, he's in hell of a shape right now too. I think he's probably in the best shape of his life. I mean, I know he also has a restaurant down in Houston. Texas, and you know, he has his hands in a lot of different things. Yeah, he's he's all over. I follow him on social media, and the guy is all over doing just tons and tons of things. Uh, but yeah, he was always he was always a joy, man. I always loved watching that guy in the ring. He was one of my favorites. I just yeah, uh, I love the character, you know, come out with the scarf and the hands and yeah, and and the good thing about him is he wasn't scared to be a bad guy. He loved being a heel. He loved it. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, most guys don't like being heels, man. They just don't like it. But he naturally loved being a heel. He And you could tell it out there. He legitimately was a badass. And you didn't want to get on his evil side because he would stomp a mud hole in you. Right. Yeah. He was one of my favorite workers, man. He was was on it. That's definitely believable. Like, when you look at him, it's like, man, I don't want to mess with that guy because he looks like he might actually – you know, kick my ass for real. You know, yeah. luckily when I met him, he was awesome. Like we had the time of our lives. But uh, you know, it's funny that you say like, you know, he didn't mind being a heel. It's those are the people that when they put their full on into it and they're just like, I don't care, you know, like Rock's the famous guy for being like, all right, you're gonna say Rocky sucks, I'm gonna own it and just take that as fuel, whatever. But real wrestling fans can see when it's not working or being phoned in so you appreciate it when you see these guys you know like right now if you look at like nxt like champa i mean mm-hmm. that guy had so much heat and it was just so believable that he really hated his best friend yeah i mean and that's the stuff that you people don't realize and and that's the stuff you get into it's when you finally fall in love with the characters and you know then you start falling in love with the storylines and then that's what gets you emotionally invested is when you see the guys that actually you know you want to boo you want to hate you know and that makes you want to watch again because you want to tune in to see him get his butt beat now you've been able to play both sides of that fence which one do you enjoy the most man I love them both. I could be heel or baby face. It doesn't, I enjoy them both. I mean, it's hard for me to be a heel outside the ring, uh-huh. but it's easy for me to be a heel inside the ring, but outside the ring, I'm just, I can't be mean to kids. Like I'm just too, <laughs> I like, I can be a heel in the ring, but outside the ring, when it comes to like meeting people and stuff, it's hard for me to like, you know, turn down someone. Cause you know, I, I've been turned down by people and I never liked that feeling. So I, me being who I am as a person, I never ever would ever want to turn down somebody or be like, no, I can't talk to you. I just, for me, that's just not who I am as a person. I can't, you know, I can be a heel all day in the ring, get me in the ring and then get me out of there and I'm cool. But you set me out to talk to some kids. I'm going to be the nicest person in the world just because that's how I was raised. And I believe that we should all treat each other equally. And, you know, kindly because this world's pretty crazy and you never know what's going to happen the next moment. Right. As, as, as should, you know, cause at the end of the day, it's a character, you know, when you're out and about, you know, those are the people paying the tickets and stuff that are giving you business. So it's nice when that can happen, but there are times too, when they're out of the building, that's like, it makes sense. Got to stay in somewhat of that character, you know, oh, depending man, on like what the is. Yeah, Bully Ray was the best. Like when we were doing the aces and eight stuff, of course, you know, me, I'm like new and getting all this fame and all these people coming. I'm all nice. And Bully Ray's like, don't be nice to him, Wes. I'm going to go fuck off and all this. I'm like, whoa, really? He's like, yeah. He goes, you got to be mean to all of them. I'm like, oh, my God. Like, And he would literally just he he's a good heel. He is, oh, he's an amazing heel. Oh, man. Bully Ray is probably one one of my favorite people, and he's a great heel. He's just – he's in it. And he'll be a heel in the ring and out of the ring, and he he's fine with that. Like, mm-hmm. he's cool with that, you know. But, I uh, mean, I've seen him just, just, just murder some fans where you're just like, holy moly, like, you just said that to this fan. Like, I can't believe it. But – and then, too, in, in the other aspect of it, those are the things that the fans remember and the, and the fans kind of enjoy those moments when the heel goes off on the, 
on someone right. in the crowd. So, and you know, you got it both ways, but it's hard for me to get into that like full, like, you know, be mean to everyone in the crowd. You know, of course, I'm always looking for the hot chick in the front row, you know, trying to say, what's up, shorty? <laughs> but, you know, that's just me. <laughs> yeah, def- definitely trying to find uh, people to get to that uh, table afterwards to get some personal time. Yeah, man. You know, of course, you know, hotel room 419, you know, knock three times and come on in, you know. <laughs> I just want to know how many times you've left a hotel card with someone and then they just don't show. Is never. it sad when that happens? Never, I've never, it's, never happened. I'm, I'm, I, it's never happened to me. I don't know yet. All I right. All right. I hope it doesn't happen. <laughs> it would probably happen to me every night. Like, <laughs> oh. I gotta pay for that goddamn what, cart I left down there too. Womp, 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 womp. <laughs> yeah, there, sir. Would you like two room keys or one? Uh, I'm just gonna go with the one. I right. always say like, give me like three or four of these bad boys because I might lose a couple of them too. Oh no, this is true. I mean, every every year when we're in Waterloo, Iowa, I feel like we both have moments together where it's like, shit. I think you just lost my key. Oh my, do you know I? I, I'm guys, I'm the worst with this. Like I even tell people that I stay with, I'm like, you better just hold on to my room key because for some reason, hotel keys do not like me until I get back home. And then I open up my bag and I'm going through all my clothes and all my bags. And there's like six hotel keys in my bag. I'm like, how the hell did all these keys end up in my bag? Like literally my last trip to Vegas and I lost my keys probably like seven or eight times. And like, okay, you guys are like, oh, Wes is in Vegas, of course. No, like to be honest with you, was not drinking. I haven't been drinking in a while and I was there for wrestling. So I was there for work. For this some reason, hotel keys do not like Mr. Briscoe. They just want to just fly away. I'm literally always asked for multiple keys. When I uh, when I was on the road a year ago doing some stuff for uh, the relay races I worked with, it would happen to me all the time too. I'd get home and find my key and be like, "What? It was in my wallet the whole time. How did I not see it?" You know. And it's so embarrassing too. Is like when you get home, you open up all your bags, and there's like four hotel keys in your bag, and you're like, "Do you just throw them out?" And yeah, you know, those are all yours too. Like, you know, no random stranger just left all these keys in your bag. Right. (laughs) I met I met a guy once that keeps the keys he keeps the key every time and he collects them all and if they don't say like you know like if you're in vegas and you're staying at like excalibur obviously their keys are going to say excalibur las vegas whatever a lot of the chain ones don't so he'll write down where it was and stuff just so you could look back i guess and say like oh i I think that's a cool little scrapbook i guess yeah i if i had that i would have way too many room keys yeah, that's what I'm, that was my thing though i was like you're gonna have to like put these things in a freaking book and at some point you're gonna have to be like it's a book of just a bunch of random plastic that i have kept yeah just years. a bunch of like polluting the environment <laughs> you know <laughs> i hope he recycles all those bad boys you i i, I hope i remember that or just keeps them but uh, yeah, it's, it's crazy the things people do though you know my sister used to collect things. spoons from every state you know everybody's got their thing yeah, everyone has their thing. Like, I like to collect my thing is I, I collect, like, when I go out of the country, money. Like, like like small currencies. Like, yeah. I have a dollar bill from our coins just from every country I've ever been to. I just, you know, I enjoy little things like that. Everyone has their little niche of stuff that they enjoy collecting or just, you know. Yeah, this is this is true. Trust me, I'm not, I'm not going to knock any of it, but I was just, like, taken back. I'm like, so wait, you keep hotel room keys of everywhere like why don't you just take a picture where you're at and then like you know print that put that in a book i i know people that used to back in the day when i was a professional wakeboarder i knew people that used to steal the actual fucking room number the room number on the yeah the room number on the actual hotel door would ply it off and take that with them and do what i don't know we were just young and crazy it just didn't just didn't care. Like, I I remember, uh, this is a wild story, so I guess I'm going to have to tell it. No, I so have to now. Yeah, so back in the day, like, when I was a professional wakeboarder and I uh, did extreme sports, uh, we would, of course, you know, travel around the world and compete in different states, different cities, different countries. And uh, one time we were in Detroit, Michigan. And lately, Shut up, Detroit. Going- 
Yeah, shout out to Detroit. Um, but uh, we've been just dis- dis- destroying hotel rooms. I mean, just like you have, like just trashing because all of our sponsors would pay for it. So we would just literally, the hotel would be just be full of wakeboarders. So we would just trash the hotel. I mean, I know guys that would flood the bottom floors <laughs> and just, yes, just absolutely, like, just like the create, like jump in the fountains in the swimming. Like, you know how you go in the hotel and there'll be like a real nice hotel and there'll be a big fountain. Yeah. You'd run and you'll jump in it and like, just like wild, wild things. Like I have some stories that are just insane. So we have a meeting before this contest. And at the time, the lady, her name was Jennifer Ellis. And she was the one Shout that out was. Jennifer. Yeah, <laughs> maybe not. But uh, <laughs> at the end of the story, you'll see why. All but right. uh, no, nah, she's always a sweetheart. But um, she had this meeting and she said, hey, if any of you guys get caught vandalizing the hotel rooms or just being wild and crazy, we're going to disqualify you from the contest. And I was like, okay, whatever. I didn't think I was, you know, cause I was at the time I was, I was running for top 10 of the world. So I was pretty focused. Okay. So I was like, whatever. And at the time I was on a bus tour. So I was touring the whole United States. And the one time I'm like, Hey, I'm going to be good. You guys go out on the bus, go party. I got to wake I got to, my, my, my heat's first thing in the morning. I'm going to stay in one of my buddies' hotel room at the hotel and try to get some sleep. And, you know, of course, I didn't know the people I was staying with had a bunch of fireworks. Cool. <laughs> and next thing I know, there's a full-on firework war going in the hotel, in the lobby of the hotel, all the way back to the rooms cops end up coming and i end up me and three other guys get up being the first people to ever get disqualified from a wakeboard contest for not for just like wilding out the night before what what is it let me ask you this what is it i love how i mean we have topics we were going to talk about and we'll still talk about them but this is not starting to just get into like a one-on-one interview with each other but it's great what is it about because i you hear this with the extreme sport like like if it was an Olympian, like going to the triathlon or swimming, or like if it was an NFL player and the next day it's, if I make this, we're in the play, you know what I mean? Like these situations, but, and, and, you know, you know, these guys for the most part are taking it super serious, but it seems like in the extreme sports world, there are zero fucks given. Like it could be like my championship runs in the morning whatever still gonna get wild tonight like i don't it, and it seems to surround the extreme sports world what is it with that well mainly is it's definitely mellowed out because it used to be super crazy in surfing and skateboarding and of course wakeboarding but it's being like i turned pro at 17 so like imagine being a professional at 17 traveling the world without your parents and you're the only person that's looking up like after you is your team manager and he's only like five years older than you so of course what does he want to do is like have a good time and you want to have a good time and you know all the sponsors everything's paid for you don't you don't pull out your wallet you don't have to do anything it's just like oh go here go do this you got to be like next thing you know it's like oh man it's four in the morning and i still gotta go ride and then the next day like it's crazy but now I've noticed it's changed a lot because a, the money that's on the line and now just kids are getting coaches and everyone's taking things a lot more serious back in the day. It was kind of like wrestling back in the day. It was the wild west, like with extreme sports, like people used to be going crazy. I remember watching this, uh, uh, surf contest with, um, Matt Archibald and uh, Christian Fletcher. And uh, he yells at Christian Fletcher to go give him like two beers before his contest run. And he chugs two beers and ends up winning the contest and ends up winning like 80 grand. And he was like so hungover from the night before and then chugs two beers before his run. And the guy that he's competing against is like next to him, like doing jumping jacks and yeah. like stretching. And he's just like chugging a beer, chain smoking a cigarette before he goes <laughs> serves and stuff. Like you're like, well, what the hell? Like, you know, there's always going to be those groups of people that are just can be crazy, but then also crazy talented, which is kind of like blows my mind when you think about is like, 
if those people could focus all those and not just party all night, if they just focus strictly on this, that's the same thing with like John Jones. Like he mm-hmm. likes to go party before a fight and stay up till like three in the morning before he goes fights. Like some people just have that freakish ability and so talented that it doesn't matter what they can do or what state they are in, they're able to perform, yeah. which I can't. Oh yeah. my, I just want to sleep. <laughs> Leave mm-hmm. me alone. Right. Yeah. I need that rest. I need that real good, just rest to be ready to do anything. But yeah. so, Hey, I got a, qu- what did you think about the big cast instant incident? What was that Sunday night? I believe, right. Sunday at the house of uh, hardcore. Yeah. House of hardcore. I guess it was now. Am I right to say this happened in like the lobby, right? Like at the signing like, table, like, yeah, I, I was, yeah. I talked to a couple of my friends that were there. And uh, they said that he was kind of acting a little bit weird throughout the day. Like he wasn't acting right. And then, yeah, it was during like an autograph signing. He just kind of collapsed and fell. Luckily, he didn't hit his head. But I was watching that video. And that was there's a video of it? Yes. Yeah, there's a video of him actually going into a seizure. And sh- like he's in a seizure for at least a good minute. That's pretty scary. Like, yeah, I, I didn't know. I I, I I read the story. I know all about it. I just didn't know there was a video. I guess the one I, I must have read it once and just didn't look at anything else that was talking about it. So I didn't know there was video of it. But yeah, I've I've witnessed people seizuring in front of me, and that's it's crazy. It's I remember it happened in high school, walking in the hall, some girl just randomly started having a seizure, and like no one else was in the hallway, so I'm like knocking on doors, like help. But it's it's crazy. But I. I mean, you know, it makes you wonder, is this a health issue? Is it Was it a one-time thing? Is it epilepsy? Is he di- getting diagnosed? You know what I mean? Like, it could be a bunch of things. I mean, I know a lot of people brought the attention to the fact that when he came out on his first indie show after being out of WWE, that he gained some con- uh, noticeable weight. That's which- what I, I, I've heard the same thing, is that he's gained a lot of weight. I don't, how many was, would, would this been his second indie match? Back, I believe. Uh, yeah, yeah, because his first one where they were climbing up the weight, I believe, was just two, three, four weeks ago. So still really yeah. recent. Yeah, you know, I mean, he's a good dude, and that's I, I, and I don't know him, so yeah, I, 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 I don't want to speculate or anything. And he always seemed like he was doing the best he could do with what was going on. I just felt that it was. I don't know. Am I, am I wrong to say that they, they, they tried to make him, they brushed it when they put him with Brian. He wasn't ready for anything. I don't think with Daniel Bryan, who was already at a surpassed level that not as felt weird as a fan watching it. Yeah. It just definitely, I think too, I don't know his mindset and what yeah. he's going through. And well, and I know, you know, there was know personal that. stuff backstage. Yeah, I know he was going through a lot of personal stuff backstage, and you know that can all wear on you. But mm-hmm. um, but I mean, he had a great size, he had a great look, he was good in ring. That like I said, it was just it just wasn't the right thing at the possibly the right time. I think at WWE, who's to say he can't get by? I mean, you've seen it happen. You've seen these guys go. You've seen it personally. Guys come and go there and get sometimes get a second chance, and maybe that's when it would happen. But. I, I think too. He not, just had a not dark... after not after the seizure deal, dude. Yeah, they're possibly pretty, not. Uh, not no. I, think, I think that might be Dunzo. Like they're pretty strict on like well, and, ability. And if it's epilepsy, you know, which obviously is a disease that gives you constant seizures. I mean, it just did the world of wrestling. It's really not the place because you shouldn't be around any pyro. You shouldn't be around any strobe lights. So I mean, like every entrance, you're you're chancing. Yeah. You're gonna seize out because of the lighting alone. Yeah, I mean that's just a scary thing. And look, let's just hope it's you know just a one-time deal. And because you know I've read about it, my uh, one time at the time one of my roommates had a seizure, and luckily I I knew what to do because I was the only one there. And you know you put when someone has a seizure, you put them on their side. You don't mm-hmm. lay on their back or let them lay face down because they can either vomit or choke on their tongue. So you always set someone up sideways. And uh, my roommate went through a seizure, and uh, he was pretty scared. But I guess everybody once in their life goes 
goes through some type of small seizure, whether you're aware of it or not, once in your lifetime, you will experience one. That's just supposedly stuff he read up on, whether it's a mild one or a, you know, a crazy one. But I guess yeah. we all experience one once in our lifetime. Well, I hope that, I hope that, you know, like you said, I hope nothing but good things and then he gets better but that's that's a scary thing especially in just a, as a person like you're the, especially if you don't never had one you don't know it's coming to have it happen in such a public yeah. place well too like when my buddy had it he woke up and he didn't even realize what happened mm -hmm. it was basically lost of time like he had no idea like he had no clue what what just happened which was crazy and worrying too at the same point of knowing that you are out for that certain amount of time and have no recollection of what just happened. Have you seen the videos online of the, like the kids or elderly people who have, you know, have going through a seizure and they've, they've dropped, put the drops of the cannabis oil, oil in their mouth. Uh, yeah. The CBD oil. And then they st stop having seizures. Like within minutes they're, they're calm. Yes, and then it goes the same with uh, dogs, too, animals. Like, uh, I just had to put my dog down, uh, rest in peace, big tank, but uh, I actually had him on CBD medicine because he had uh, cancer. And uh, as soon as we got him on that CBD medicine, we took him off the painkillers, and he was barking again, he was eating food again, and he was actually being normal. Those pills just, those pills kill you, man. Mm-hmm. They'll take a hold of you and uh even as a dog you know you could tell when he was all doped up he would just kind of lay in the corner and it just he didn't even seem normal but then once we gave him that cbd oil he really there he really responded well to that yeah you know? yeah that's rough too then that's a rough thing man big shout out to you i thought about you the whole week that was that's a rough thing they have to go through yeah, especially unexpected really, like that yeah man it's definitely hard having to bury you your dog you know or one of your best friends but you know no, it's you gotta you gotta move on and you know he lived a, he lived a pretty good life he never was chained up never was on a leash he had complete freedom to do whatever he wanted right, to right. So he lived a good life but. Well, good man i'm glad that and like i say you'll see him again someday they're all waiting for us someday but yeah, yeah that's, that's scary doggy, doggy heaven as they call right. it yeah, that is scary for Cass, and hopefully he bounces back. But have you heard about – now, because here's the thing. I always liked Cass. Obviously, I had my feelings about Enzo as the character, as the worker, as whatever he is now. I think I think they're all one. I don't believe – They kind of do blend, yeah. But have you – did you hear now – because we talked about on the last episode his little stunt when he uh, appeared at the uh, Survivor Series – but now he's uh he put a tweet out saying he's going to be live on broadway right after the wwe show at madison square garden right after christmas live doing what that's just it he doesn't say what he's gonna do he says live on broadway and i think people are still are like he's gonna be performing live somewhere on broadway when i hear him say live on broadway i think he's just going to be standing outside on the sidewalk of broadway after the show trying to just talk i guess i don't know but or maybe he's gonna rap on the side I, I i don't know but he put it out so my guessing would be is wwe's gonna shut him down whatever he's doing but yeah they're definitely i like see that's crazy why does he he just wants to he's trying he's one to of the, yeah man he's a soundcloud rapper whatever what they call him soundcloud yeah, rappers SoundCloud or rapper. whatever where they just troll on people and like just try to get reactions out of the people by saying stupid things like come on man like <laughs> you know what this is though this is him realizing like shit i thought i was awesome and i thought i didn't need them now i realize that i'm not awesome i can't rap it's not like if you look at his views someone was saying it's like the number of views he's had from when he put it out is so minimal compared to just regular average joe people like it's he's not getting huge hits because he's Enzo Amore you know no, so I think all. now it's just he's just trying to keep his name out there by just trying to crash these events or be by WWE and the thing yeah. is like it's funny when he got kicked out of Survivor Series you saw it I saw it they they booed that he was there it wasn't like they were booing that he was getting drug out yeah no one cares like they, now they don't even like him they 
they dislike him even worse just because of the, his attitude and the way he is. And, you know, he already made fun of all the wrestling fans that actually liked him. So, like, how are you going to make fun of all the wrestling fans and then now expect all of them to, like, hey, I'm back or kind of like, hey, guys, come listen to my stuff when you make fun of me. Like, right. I don't know. I don't really like the kid. Never did. Never will. So, whatever. <laughs> I don't we shouldn't even talk about him. We should yeah, even give him more likes. But uh yeah, him and then he he reminds me of that six nine guy, basically, you know. No I'm right when he's in jail, right? Six nine. Well he's in court right now. But he's going to jail. He probably will go to jail because I guess before all this he was a pedophile. Which what? I didn't know that. Yeah, he was a pedophile. Now this guy's like what seventeen? No, he's older than what I think. He's way older than what he like says he is. And this yeah, is the dude that looks like got, he, he got arrested for being a pedophile. Really? And then we're talking about the guy who's like a walking ad for Skittles, right? Like the rainbow yes, hair, jigsaw chain. Jesus, yeah. what is wrong with these guys? Yeah, I don't know, man. He is he's something special. But he fits in right in that little category of uh we need to come up for a show. Guys, uh fans, everyone listening, help us come up with a category to help us put in all these people that just act like dumbasses in public. We need to come up with a funny name and we're gonna start a list. And right now, Enzo six nine are in this list. So if you guys wanna help out with this list or uh fill us in on some other people that we should definitely check out, please uh hit up the Briscoe and Big Ace show on Twitter, hashtag Facebook, all that good stuff. Hit us up, you know, ask us some questions. We'd be more than happy to respond for you guys. Yeah, definitely. We had one question come in. We we for some reason can't find it. I vaguely remember Wes. It had something to do about using, I think, today's current just roster of anybody, pro uh, WWE or indie, and putting together our dream faction is what it had to Ooh. do. With, I believe. Huh. Our and w- how many members do we get? Four members, I'm guessing. I mean, I think that's kind of the deal, right? Like you look at the the greats, the you know, Four Horsemen, Evolution. Okay, are, so so these are guys that are still alive, are guys that have passed. I think just current wrestlers, period. Oh, current guys. Doesn't that matter, are... company. Just current in your dream. I believe I could be off. It had to do with the dream faction, though. Huh. Oh man. Oof. I. <sighs> That's going to be a hard one. You know, of course, any of the, we got to have big, big Brian Cage in there. Mm. Yeah, I mean, you got to have the muscle, right? Yeah, you got to have the muscle. So we would say Brian Cage for the muscle. Ace, who would you say for the uh, high flying? For the high flying? <laughs> um. Hmm. I mean, you got uh, you got obviously Flip Gordon is huge right now on the indie scene. Obviously, his name is Flip. He flips a lot. Great high flyers. I'm gonna go off topic real fast. What <laughs> happened to um, Pac? Where is he? He hasn't been doing any Neville. Sorry, his WWE Neville. Has he been doing any indies? Is what's up with him? Oh, Adrian Neville. Yeah, sorry to get way off, guys. Sorry to get way off the. No, you're good. Oh, we're high flyers. You can't mention high flyers though. Mention probably one of the absolute. Well, because when you said Pac, you threw me off. But yeah, Neville. Um, he just literally did his first indie show like a week or two ago. Oh, nice, nice. All right, so he's back I, now. I saw a picture of him, and he looked jacked. Oh yeah, dude, for sure. Um, I, I you know, it was funny. That you mentioned that because someone did ask him on like a Q and A like a couple of weeks ago or something about uh, um, why did you leave WWE? Because you know when he left WWE, if you don't know, people listening wasn't exactly on the best of terms, and uh, his answer was because they decided to take it from I can't remember what he used to call himself the the man, the king, the one, whatever his nickname was, and give my title to. Uh, I think he said a SoundCloud rapper. Uh, 
<laughs> that meeting, is awesome. meeting them though. Um, so yeah. which and if you really look back at it, that is completely true. Two hundred five live was a legitimate great thing, cruiserweight thing. As soon as they put it on Enzo, and all he did was build a stable and just do nothing, do it nothing, kind of killed the two hundred five brand. It did. It totally killed it. And two and props out to Neville, like Neville being a straight up gangster and saying, you know what. I'm better than that. You guys are making the wrong decision, which in the long run, Neville was way over, Mm -hmm. you know, and in the long run, they made the mistake of being, oh, we're going to do this on Enzo. They should have just let Neville have the ball with it and let him, you know, let him decide who he thinks is next in line because Neville is the type of guy that will put anybody over at the right time at the right moment, you know, but if he doesn't think the time's right, you know, the business is not good. He ain't going to do it for nothing. Right. Very true. All right. Okay. So back. Okay. Who's your high flyer? Who's going to be our high flyer in this group? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm slow. I'm quietly sitting here writing up my little, my little faction list. And I, I don't have a high flyer on mine yet either. Cause I'm stuck. Like I said, flip Gordon, an amazing, amazing worker. But like, like would Finn Balor can be considered a high flyer. <laughs> Prince Devitt. Uh, I no, I mean oh, Ricochet would probably be. The oh, best. oh my God! Oh my God! Uh, of course, yeah, yeah, Ricochet would be, of course, in anybody's top of the list. I mean, Ricochet. No, and, and he's on my list now. I totally just fucking missed that one. I don't know how exactly I did because he's on NXT. That's why. Oh I, snap! <laughs> but no, Ricochet. Yes, definitely. So that. <laughs> So who do you have so far for your faction, Wes? I mean, Brian Cage, uh, Ricochet, Sam, Sammy Callahan, and probably... Ooh, Sammy Callahan. That's a real good call, real good pull. I would either have Caleb Conley or... Um, Alex Hammerstone. Okay. I think I think I think that would be a pretty damn good uh faction. I like it. I like it. Here's what I have. I have I'm gonna go with Ricochet. Um Marty Skrull. I just like Marty Skrull's work. I really do. So I've I'm putting a faction together, he's gonna be in it. Yeah. Um Kevin Owens, Kevin Steen will always be top of my list. I love that dude. So he's in it. That talk about a guy who commits to being the villain. I love oh, it. Yeah. And it's old school style. He does that old school shit that I love that mm-hmm. you don't see enough anymore. And I love it. So Kevin Owens for sure. Um Cody Rhodes. Oh, yes, definitely Cody. I would I can't do anything without Cody Rhodes involved in it now. And this isn't just uh, you know, jumping on this bandwagon that he has. And I I don't want to say bandwagon, but obviously the guy really blew up when he left WWE with uh the uh, you know, the um Bullet Club now being the elite, all in, all that. Uh, it's amazing. But I knew when I met him 10 years ago how amazing of a guy worker he was you know i saw it the star does shit if anybody was just like oh god i'm so sick of this screw you like really watch it because he was sick of it and he still made it work every damn time yeah he did it he did a hell of a job with that but i love i love and his dad was dusty come on you yep. cody rhodes for sure and of course i can't have a faction without west briscoe oh snap yeah i gotta have my boy in it so and then uh my only honorable mention that i was like maybe and i didn't was keith lee keith lee okay and then the other guy i would die and get to mention would be zach saber jr Ooh, yeah i'm a big i'm a big fan of him yeah, i watch yeah. a lot of his wrestling big fan of him definitely penta would have been another one i wanted to mind well okay okay but, just throwing it out there just throwing it out there i like that question that was a good question if that's what it was exactly so definitely people keep sending those in yeah please guys keep sending in questions you know we're on twitter facebook you can also hit us up on our instagrams on all of that please man Be involved. Sure. help us help us with the show right now Wes, i forget what's your nfl team 
I don't really want to mention it right now because we suck, but the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Tampa Bay, dude, I was such a fan back in the Warren Sapp days. Oh, yeah. Who, yeah, Warren Sapp was a bad dude. A dude was boss. Okay. So I, I'm, I'm happy to say I'm a Cowboys fan right now. Uh, you on the Cowboys bandwagon or are you a Cowboy fan? Since uh, since I've been watching football, since I was a since wee lad. Deion Sanders, Michael Irvin, Troy mm-hmm. Aikman. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Back in those days, it was even a little before that, like when I didn't even really just know who they were. I just was watching it. Yeah. Uh, but the only person that ever showed me football, because my dad didn't watch it, my brother didn't watch it, uh, was like an uncle. And he was like, yeah. Cowboys, you like the Cowboys, and it stuck. So I'm a Cowboys yeah. guy. And we had a huge win this week in overtime mm-hmm. over over Dude, the this, defending champs oh my god this sun, this past sunday with football was just absolutely amazing every Dude, game was just miami like, oh yes oh my on the trick play too miracle comeback with the uh, the the short toss out into a yeah, just double it was a, like double two laterals, laterals. Two, laterals. Two, two laterals and then the homeboy just says i got it and he did dude he ran th- like he shouldn't dude, have had it rock. he ran, he ran through, through them I know it was crazy. Oh, and yeah, and Gronk with the slip at the end, like, oh my goodness, that was huge. That was a fun one to watch. But now we were talking earlier about uh, Kareem. I can't remember his last name. Was it Davis Hunt? You're right, Kareem Hunt from Kansas City. Uh, about uh, that whole fiasco, we didn't uh, get a chance to talk about that, so we're gonna we're gonna do that right now. So the video came out. Yeah, everything came out. He got released. Uh, he got released fast. And the craziest thing about it is the Chiefs knew about it before they knew. And, and they weren't going to do anything until that video leaked. Well, and exactly. And the, the, the did you hear their uh, reasoning once the video was leaked? No. What was the reasoning? It so was that, that he, didn't, he didn't give them all the info. He didn't oh. give them the full story that ended up being in the video. That was what they said. BS. It was more of, oh, shit, the video's coming out. We know what he did. Let it come out, and then we'll let him go. My guess. I mean, it's the NFL. It's horrible. (laughs) It's so horrible, that business. Yeah, it's it's pretty corrupt right now. It it really is. But, I mean, you saw it, right? Yeah, I saw it, and it didn't look as, like, how we were talking to say earlier, it didn't look as bad as... Everyone says it was, but sir, it's bad, and I don't believe anybody should act that way, especially towards mm. a girl. No, 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 no. The way that because he even shoved that one guy. Yeah. One guy went into the girl, and she looked like she hit her head because he pushed that one dude so hard that he fell into the girl, and the girl hit her head. It's just, you know, there's no reason for all that stuff, you know, at all. You know. I don't, well, hey, like you said. I was raised the same way. No matter the circumstance, no matter how bad it really is, no matter what, you never just, as a man, you never put your hands on a female. You just don't. No, There's nothing just... that could ever warrant that. No, you know? No way. <laughs> now, Bill Burr has a great bit, if you ever listen to Bill Burr, where he's like, I get it. But let me talk about some reasons why you may want to. But I, I get it. And it's hilarious. Yeah. So check that out. But, I, you know, you should never do it. But the other thing is, you're an NFL player. You can't be in a public place and let that kind of stuff happen and and think you're getting away with it. No. And All eyes his, are on you. Oh, and I believe that was his residence where he lived. Which, again, though, like, you're in the lobby, though. Yeah. You know there's cameras. You know that's a public spot. People are going to be coming in and out. You cannot do that because if they know who you are, it's coming out. <laughs> Especially this day and age with cameras being everywhere, you know, and that doesn't give any, no one should do anything like that. No, no, not at all. And that's not, I'm not trying to be like, you're, you know, if you're not in the NFL, you get, you know, I get, you know, but it's like, dude, you're in the NFL. You have to be squeaky clean already. So why would you think this would be okay? Like you should have just came out and been like, I messed up. The video is going to come out at some point. So let's just be done with this. I'm going to walk away. Yeah insane insane on a lighter note i think he's getting therapy though so good for him i I think you know therapy will really help out (laughs) (laughs) oh man 
All right. Well, what else should we talk about? Is there anything else uh, out there that we should hit on that we haven't really touched on? Trying to think if there anything, if there is anything. Um, that little rapper's little Xanax that has Xanax tattooed on his face is in rehab. I don't know if that's any news. But is what is in rehab? So does that mean they'll take the? His tattoo name is off? Little Xanax. <laughs> <laughs> they, they should have to laser that off his head when he finishes treatment. I, uh, that should that should definitely be one of the twelve steps: this is lasering Xanax off your face, dude. If I was a judge in his court, oh, I would totally be like, um, I was gonna give you like twenty years, but I'll give you ten, and then they're gonna just laser that off your head. Yeah, like, why, why, why would he even? I don't understand all these face tattoos. I don't get it. I'm not getting them now too. Mike Tyson did it so many years ago and it is what it is it's mike tyson yeah the freaking guy could do what he wants because he's mike tyson why are these like street like wannabe street thugs do it i don't know little white kids it's it all is. kids that are soundcloud rappers that have all these like crazy face tattoos I, am i wrong that i come from an era that if you got face tattoos that means you probably killed somebody yeah you know what i mean yeah, like a lot of people like saying with they get the fake all those fake tear drops and like back in my day, if you had a tear drop, that means you killed somebody. Right. If For you sure. Had a, if you had a spider web on your uh, elbow, that means you went to prison. Well, yeah, I know dude, all, all that. Cool. Now, okay, this is a good question, Wes, just because you are someone who's got quite a bit of tattoo work done. I, I can't remember what are your are your arms completely covered. I don't have any on my arms. Okay, so your 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 legs are completely covered, though. I'm from the chest all the way down. Okay, nine hundred and eighty-eight hours. How many hours? Nine hundred and eighty-eight hours. I don't think I've ever done anything for that long a time. <laughs> well, it wasn't all at once. Well, I know it wasn't all at once, but I mean, I don't think I've done anything. They can maybe watching wrestling. That's about it. <laughs> that's. Yeah. That's a long time, man. Like, so how many, like, did this take, like, in a in a year, in two years, three years? It's been, it's, right now, it's been a span of 10 years. And is it done, or is there more to go? I got to finish my back. Okay. Are you going to move into your, like, arms, possibly neck or anything? Nah, I'm not, I'm not really into that. God. I never really got them to show off or to look tough. I kind of got them because they all have really strong meanings for me. Mm-hmm. So I never really got them to like kind of like show off. They're always stuff that I can keep hidden. And, you know, maybe when I'm, maybe one day I'll get my arms done. But as of right now, I just want to do my whole entire back and then I'll, I'm good for a while. Right. Now, when you do some of these small towns and you're doing shows for the weekend, you're in like a little hall or something. It's a nice summer day though. And you're rocking the shorts and stuff. Do you get some people who like take a step back when they realize your legs are completely covered in tattoo work? There's been times where I've had just shorts on and no shirt and people look at me and they're like, Oh my God. And then they meet me with like clothes on. They're like, you're such a nice man, but why did you have to get all that? I'm like, what's the difference? Like, right. You know, like I'm, I've never understood that. Like people would be like, they'll meet me and they'll see me like have my clothes on. And afterwards I'll like go wrestle or let's say we jump in the pool or something. And they're like, wow, you're such a nice young man. I never thought you would have all these tattoos. You're like, whoa, like how did like you, you were nice to me at first, but then you saw that I was super inked up. And then now you have this crazy opinion about me that is totally untrue because you totally liked me when you first started to me and then you saw me and you just stood back and were like, whoa, this guy's kind of crazy. Right. That's you know, all the time. I, I always wonder that because I obviously, I look so non-threatening to anybody really. But like I have my one arms kind of covered my hand. I have a tattoo on my hand and I'll tend to have people sometimes look and just be kind of like, really? And, you, yeah, and it's, it's just crazy. like, I, I don't get it. Now, I don't get it. No, What's your neck tattoo then? No, I'm definitely not going to do my neck. That's Stay next. Away. Staying away from the neck. No neck. What are you doing next? Oh, next. Uh, finishing my back. Okay. 
I got a huge piece that I just time, money, time. Time is really the big thing. Is that's gonna take at least a month to do. Right. That's the thing with tattoos too. Is it? It's, you got to plan in advance for them because they do. They so much work going to them and the money. So much work into them and the time. You know, um, especially my, if you want quality. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like my right arm, the two pieces that I have that take my whole four forearm basically uh were six hours seven hours each yeah but they were you know quality you know, done by quality so it was it was fine but man that's that alone like i remember going lightheaded uh, after the last hour on my skull yeah i can't i can only sit i can i used to be able to sit for like five to six hours but now i can only sit for like two hours and i'm right now i'm over it I've, well you know I've, what we I've, need I've, I've earned my badge of uh of toughness right what we need is we need one of our listeners to submit a really sick briscoe and big ace uh logo Ooh. custom logo right like and like that. if it's super awesome but when we do like a one-year anniversary i'll put that on me Ooh, ooh, i might get that on me too yeah we'll see we'll see we'll see how this podcast does <laughs> see what you guys come up with and um we really need you guys' help please hit the subscribe button retweet likes hit all those buttons man help us out help us spread the news and hopefully you guys are enjoying what we're putting out and rate and review we're just trying to have fun and just trying to give you guys a different uh perspective on wrestling and our lives and pretty much everything and feel free man ask us questions tell us some more things you would like to hear on the show is there any stories you would like to hear you know feel free you know we're here and we want to cater to you guys and make it interesting for you guys to want to listen so feel free yeah uh, yeah definitely and rate anything review everything that helps us out in those algorithms gets our name out there even more and uh yeah definitely just questions anything throw your feedback our way and uh, we'll look forward to bringing more episodes your way and uh hopefully we'll start bringing you some really cool guests as well so let us know if there's somebody you thought i think that would be uh cool to have a sit down with wes and i yeah yeah, let us know we definitely got some guests coming up we got guests not only wrestling extreme sports music i have a bunch of people lined up you know, so guys, help us out with some questions and uh, and who you guys would like to see on the podcast. Feel free, man. Hit us up, link us up, and please keep staying tuned. That's right. We'll see you all on episode five of the Briscoe and Big A Show. All right, guys. Peace, love, and happiness.